Good morning from Green Island again. Today I want to share with you my tree lilies. I always look forward to the time of year when they come into bloom because the scent of them is absolutely intoxicating. Visitors to the garden often ask me what on earth I feed my lilies with to get them to grow so tall. And the answer is absolutely nothing. They're, they're bred to be this tall. They're tree lilies, that's what they're called. Uh, the scent of them is absolutely beautiful and each stem can have up to 40 blooms on it. They take a couple of years to get into a magnificent clump like this, but my general rule of thumb for these is plant them as deep as you possibly can. And by as deep as you can, what I mean is as deep as your soil will allow you to plant them without them becoming waterlogged in winter. If they become too wet in winter, the bulbs will rot. So if you've got a poorly drained soil, you won't be able to plant them so deep. You can see this clump here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, st tall stems coming from that clump. And that was planted three years ago, just as one bulb. So if they're happy where you put them, they clump up and multiply very, very quickly. This one here is called Arania, and she's usually one of the first ones to come into bloom. And once the flowers start opening from the bottom, I get a good three weeks to a month out of them by the time the top blooms have finished. Um, I'll show you some more uh, different varieties we've got. Uh, the other thing about these is that they do need to be staked, I find. Not because of the wind, because they're incredibly strong, self-supporting stems. But when the blooms actually come out, the weight of the blooms on each stem can sometimes weigh them over. So I do tend to put a cane in and I have to do that early in the season before the soil gets too dry. There's no way I could possibly stake them now. So the canes go in early as soon as we see the growth emerging from the ground and then we tie them as they grow up. So this is another variety we've got growing here close to the treehouse. This one's called Anastasia. Um, the flowers are slightly further apart on the, on the stems and it's even taller. You can see these ones have grown up to about eight feet and they'll probably still go on, go on growing a bit more. Um, the, other, the only other problem and issue people have with growing lilies is the dreaded lily beetle. Those horrible little red beetles that you can see from the beginning of uh, April and May. And we simply come out and squash them with our fingers. Uh, if you do have to use some sort of chemical on them, the best thing is Provado Bug Clear, although I'm not advocating the use of chemicals. But just one treatment with that early in the morning um, when you first see the first lily beetles and then six weeks later should keep your lilies free of lily beetles for an entire season. So here we are in uh, Meg's garden in the woods and this variety does really really well here. It's called Purple Prince, it's one of the earlier flowering varieties again but you can see masses of flowers up to a height of a good seven feet on here. Uh, so lovely for cutting. And these clumps now, these, these ones have only been here for two years. This is their second year. I planted uh, three, four, five bulbs a couple of years ago. And already it's producing enough stems for me to cut big bunches and take them into the house so we can enjoy them inside as well as out. The other end of the woods we can see some more tree lilies we've got here this one is uh, called black beauty and it flowers much later than the others so i like to have a continuation of the the tree lilies from right from the middle of july right through to september so these ones will be flowering in middle of august through to september lovely pink colored one again 